All right, good morning, everybody. I see people are starting to come in the room. So we're going to give it just a few seconds to allow everybody to come in and join us this morning. We've got a few more people that are being let in by the software, so we're going to give it just another second and we'll get started here shortly. All right, I think we are going to be able to get going. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. My name is Cale Harbor. I'm the product manager here at Advanced Control Solutions. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to be going through an introduction to MIR, which is our mobile autonomous robot that's used for material transport. And leading our conversation this morning is going to be one of our automation specialists, Mr. Jared Miller. Uh, Jared, are you with us this morning? I am. Hi. Awesome. Well, um, what I did want to let everybody know about, we're actually conducting this webinar from the ACS Automation Lab. If you have not seen the lab in a virtual demo or remote demo so far, please let us know. Shoot us an email uh, at info at acs-ga.com. That'll be in the follow-up emails to this session as well. We'd love to take you on a personal tour, show you more details. But with that being said, since this is our automation lab and available to our sales staff, it is possible one of our guys could log into the room while we're running. So if you do happen to see the lights turn on or off, it could be that someone is using the room for another demo. But that's also part of the capabilities that we have to be able to support our customers during this time where we've got to do a more remote connection with everybody. Uh, I think that's it for the housekeeping. Jared, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, go for it. All right, so without further ado, all right, so today we're gonna to talk about Mir. So let's just go ahead and jump into this. I have a quick presentation, and then after that, we're gonna go and into the software of the Mir, and we're gonna learn how to create a map, create a mission, and then kinda of do a little taste of what else Mir can offer. So MIR is classified as an AMR, unlike traditional AGVs. AGVs are, think of it more as a static guided vehicle. If something is blocking it, it will stop or go over it. It requires tracks and other sorts of paths. An AMR is trackless, it's autonomous, it's more dynamic, it is actively planning around obstacles, and they're easy to change within a work environment. So we're gonna talk about the hardware now. So we have two safety scanners on the front left and front right, our back right corner. This allows for 360 degree view around the mirror. We also have 3D cameras on the front, which allow to see things on the floor as well as things up high as well, up to a meter and a half, I believe. We also have proximity sensors on the larger robots in the 500 and 1000. As you can see right here on the right side of the screen with four proximity sensors in each of the corner. So Mir offers five robots, the newest one being the Mir 250, which has been released within the past couple of weeks, but it starts off with the Mir 100. The numbers stand for the payload it can handle. So 100 kilograms for the Mir 100, 200 kilograms for the Mir 200, and so on. The Mir 500 and 1000 are gonna be a good bit larger than the other robots. They're more for handling pallets. So now we're going to get into how to program the mirror and dive in more into the software of it. All 
All right. Can you guys see my uh, screen now? Yep. Good to go. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to go into the default dashboard real quick. And see, this is a current map that we have set up. And you can see all of the red data is data that it's taking them currently. And you can see my footsteps as I step back and towards. And as I get closer to the mirror as well. So all of that red data is data that is live. All the black data is data that is recorded. Hey, so Jared, right? would you yes. will you be able to zoom in on that a little bit more? There you go. Perfect. And feel free to ask questions along the way. Yeah. As well. Just as a side note, I will be monitoring the chat room. If anyone does have a question, please post it and I'll coordinate with Jared to make sure we get that answered. All right. So now we're actually going to cr create a new map of the room. I'm going to call it uh, is the 14th. So just Hey, Jerry, is there a specific logic on why you're starting with the date for the room? No, I just decided with things changing in this room, uh, I just decided we'll record the data from today's date. It also is better to, I like including the date sometimes because if your facility is very dynamic, you may want to take into account, okay, we had these machines here at this time, but then it moved. So remapping and editing the map may be something that may need to look into. So it could help in the programming and the maintenance of the robot down the road by having the name mean something. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we kind of start off with this white square with a black outline on it. So what we're going to want to do is come in and we're going to record an overwrite on everything. And I'm going to start mapping. So what I'm doing right now is I'm logging into the robot with my phone. I find it easier to drive the robot with my phone and use my thumb. So right now I'm driving the robot around the room, mapping all the data on turns and straightaways. It's always good to make a serpentine like pattern so that you can get as much accurate data as possible. Okay. So Jared, at this point, are you just following the robot with your phone to be able to control the motion of it? I am. Okay. Is it required you program from the phone or can you program the robot from the PC or is it a combination of the two? So you can do either or. The same software that's running on or the same web page that's on my computer is also available on my phone, though it is a lot easier to do it all on the computer just because of the larger screen and the easier navigation. However, it is cap capable of doing everything on your phone or a right. tablet. Is this a piece of software that we have to install or uh, how do we gain access to the software? It's all web page oriented. So any device that can access a web page is capable of accessing the mirror. All right. Okay, so I just I just log on to the mirror itself and the web page for the software comes up for me. Right. After you're typing in the correct HTML. Okay. All right. So you can see I mapped the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. And after that, we have the map of the room. So what I want to do now is make sure that I line up my walls with these grid patterns. Because you don't want to have a skewed map because the mirror is going to be traveling. And if it's traveling up the map, you don't want to be traveling diagonal in your facility or in your room in this case. So we want to make sure that we align it 
the vertical the walls with the grid pattern as best as possible. That's interesting, Jared. That brings up a question. I was working with one of my customers with a mirror, and I noticed on a straight hallway, as the robot was going down, it was zigzagging left and right. Could that been have been caused from the map not being squared to the grid pattern here? Exactly. It's you really want to try to. I had experienced the same problem. I was at a customer site once, and there was this big long corridor, and the mirror would go diagonal and then kind of come back the other way, almost like a sailboat tacking, if you're familiar with that movement. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that these walls are lined up with these lines so that you do get those straight paths as the mirror goes down corridors and other various types of walkways. All right, so we have our map lined up pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and change the map as well. So you can see the red data right now is kind of offset from it. So what we have to do is we have to place the robot within the map, which is going to be called localization. We want to make sure that our localization is good, because that's how the robot knows where it is and can accurately travel within your area. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to set the robot start position. And you can see I'm about 45 degrees off. So from there, I can actually further adjust the robot position by just clicking on that button a couple of times. And you can see that the data has snapped into the recorded data. So I know my localization is good now. So after that, you can see that there's some black air areas that I don't really want. So the black areas are going to be your walls, and then your white areas are going to be the floor. The areas that the mirror travels, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any floor areas. So kind of these dots right here where my feet were, and then also on the right side as well. And this mirror, we're going to want to delete so that the mirror will travel through them and not falsely think that there is a wall. So I'm going to come over here and click on my walls. The way I like to work in this drop down menu, you start from the top and work to the bottom. So we have our walls and our floors. And then from there, we can create positions. So those are going to be more like our points where the mirror will drive to. And then our markers. So the markers will be a charging station or a docking station as well. And then we have our zones. I'll get into the zones later and I'll add a couple. So first we're going to start in our walls. And I'm going to want to delete all the unnecessary ones. I'm just going to come over here with my eraser and just click and then erase this one as well. And just a couple more from over here. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see right here where I deleted, I now have gray. The gray is more of a undefined area, I would call it. So what I want to do with that gray area is I want to add in floors. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm just going to draw a shape. And if I hold down the shift key, shift key, I can draw in a straight line, like so. We just draw a square around that and cover it up. Hey, Jared, that would be a, now would be a good time to answer one of the questions that we've had okay. come up in the chat room. The um, One of the questions we had, was the layout already loaded or was it scanned by the mirror? And I just wanted to reiterate, reiterate to that one that we scanned in using the built-in laser safety scanners of the mirror in order to create the map. It was not a CAD drawing that was imported in. Uh, right. One of the right. other questions that we had, Jared, is... Can you, or does the, will the robot go into a non-mapped area? So the robot 
won't go into a non-mapped area. It will only go in an area that it knows. So if I were to try to drive the robot and autonomously into this gray area, it won't do it. But if I were to manually drive the robot elsewhere, it will operate, it will move fine. Okay. All right, and uh, we had a question. So we're accessing the mirror via Wi-Fi, and that is a true statement, isn't it? Yes, that is a true statement. There is an onboard router, so the mirror is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi. However, I am currently the mirror is currently connected to the Wi-Fi in our office, so that's how I'm able to access it through the IP address that we have assigned the mirror as well as on my phone. So I am not actively logged on to the mirror's Wi-Fi, but I'm just accessing it through the IP address. Okay, so there's actually two Wi-Fi antennas on the unit, one to be able to access to get to the programming interface and a second antenna that goes straight to the PC that would put it onto the network of the manufacturing facility that we would be working in. Right. All right. All right. uh, we've got a couple more questions, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save those for a little while longer. I'll let you keep going. All right. So now we're going to get into our zones, our directional zones. Those are going to be for creating lanes, which I will demonstrate later. So we can have a directional zone on the right to where the robot, if it is traveling in that area, will only go in a certain direction. A preferred zone is going to be an area that the robot prefers and will go out of its way to go in that area. Unpreferred just the opposite of a preferred, the robot will only travel in that area if it has to. Forbidden, this is gonna be ro areas that the robot can't go. If you were to manually drive the robot into a forbidden zone, it will lock up and give you an error saying that the robot won't be able to move. Critical zones, that's more for traveling in narrow areas. So if you're going through a doorway, it will bring in the safety scanners and disable the 3D cameras so that you can move through narrow areas. Speed zones, it's going for faster or slower. So if you have a turn and you wanna make sure that the mirror slows down in that area before it turns, so it can watch out for forklifts and people. Sound and light zones, if you have a turn as well and you wanna play a sound before it enters that turn, or if you want it to play a light as well, you are able to download MP3s onto it. So we've done song, we've downloaded songs onto the robot. We've had customers play songs at certain times during their mission. And then we have planner zones. Planner zones is where the robot will plan its route in it, or plan its route ahead of time, and then IO zones is where we will trigger IO when we enter the zone. So the robot doesn't have any internal IO, however, we can connect to IO accessible through Wi-Fi. So in this case, we'll be accessing Advantex WISE module, and then limit robot zones and evacuation zones, which are accessible through fleet. Limit ro robot zones, Pretty self-explanatory. If you limit it to one robot, only one robot will enter and your other robots will wait outside until that one robot has left that area. So we're gonna add a couple of zones. I'll demonstrate kind of my favorite way of creating lanes and that's using preferred and directional zones. So I'll create a lane where I am. So we're just draw a new line I'm gonna go to the settings. I'm gonna make it pretty thin because we don't have a whole lot of room to work with. And I'm gonna do that straight line that I was talking about and just add one right there. And I'm gonna add a directional zone. Right there as well.
Uh, Jared, what's the advantage of having a preferred and a directional zone laid out in your manufacturing environment? So, as I continue making this lane, it's gonna the robot's gonna try to operate within that preferred zone. So you're really gonna create these lanes. So with the AMR, it is it is able to constantly adapt to its environment. But one thing this does is it kind of, it almost treats it like an AGV where you can have it move in a straight line and kind of snap it to a lane or snap it to a path. So I'm gonna throw an unpreferred zone in. So this will act as our median per se. I'm actually gonna change that and make that smaller. So I'll just create it and leave it as that. And then I'm gonna come over here and add some markers. So actually I did that wrong and I would like to add positions. Don't worry, Jared, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Thank you, Kale. So I'm gonna add a position up top. Now, a, a position, is that the same as a robot point that you're teaching for a conventional robot? Yes. So if you saw when I clicked on the position, I placed the XY coordinates, but then I also have control of its theta as well. So the theta is gonna be the robot's orientation. So I'm gonna put it about at a negative 45 degrees so that the robot will point towards the southeast corner of the map. We're just gonna call this position one. Now, do you have to teach the points um, on the map like this, uh, or can you use the actual robot itself? So you can use the actual robot itself. So I can do, I can put a point down, and then I can just use get robot use the robot position, and I'll call that position two. Is it more accurate to put it on the map yourself or actually more accurate to drive the robot where you need it to be and then teach the point? So it depends on how you program. So if you're a much more visual person, then it's probably going to be advantageous for you to drive the robot to that point. You get to see where the closest things are to it. So if you want it to stay within about five feet away from a certain object, you can put a point there and make sure that the robot's not gonna go closer to that object. But if you kind of just place it in the map, it's kind of just more of a guesstimating. So okay. just for quickness of laying down points, I'm just gonna be guesstimating in this. All right. We did have a question come in that's appropriate right now. Mm -hmm. Does the thickness of the line matter in the settings and how? So when you were setting the thickness of your preferred zone and your uh, unpreferred zone, does how thick you make it matter or is it, or is it just programming convenience for the screen? So let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, there they are. So if you see the thin line of the preferred zone right here, I'm assuming you guys can see my cursor, I hope. Yes. Well, that's gonna, the mirror's gonna travel in that preferred zone. So if I were to make it bigger, the margin of movement for the mirror is gonna want to be bigger as well. So that's why I made the thin line for the preferred zone. And then I actually probably could move it. And that would probably make, be a little safer as well, because that's pretty close to so the so if I were to paraphrase this, if mm -hmm. I have a wider line that gives the robot more freedom to be left and right within my lane, where if I make it smaller, it's going to be more precise on the path I want it to go. Say I'm in a narrow area with other racks and carts around me. Precisely. So I'm just moving these over to have a better margin away from so in this case it may have, would have been better to drive the robot over here to see how close i was from different objects so 
I'm going to add a forbidden zone. I'm not going to want the robot to travel in this area. So let's say there was a walkway there and I didn't want the robot to travel over there. Or there is a machine over there. And I'm just wrap. Oh. So one thing you need to do is you always have to click the check mark. And sometimes I forget that. So I just got to redraw my shape real quick. Don't feel alone. I have forgotten to hit the check mark myself, Jared. <laughs> so it grays out the trick check mark really nicely, but sometimes I just miss it. So now we'll have this preferred zone. So the robot will only let's zoom back out. It'll only operate in these quadrants of the map. Okay. Uh, one question that has come in from several folks that I've seen is uh, how do you create a program to have this robot go back and forth between those two points? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're going to get into that in a couple of minutes now. I'm just going to finish tidying up the map so that we have a functioning map. And then we're going to get into that programming. It's kind of the better your map, the better that your mirror is going to run. So if you have a really, really fine tuned map, your mirror is going to run really well. If you have a not carefully edited map, it's going to tend to run not as smooth. So I'm just going to call it on that and save the map. And the robot is currently. So I'm going to actually add a couple more positions real quick. All right. So now we're going to create a mission to move in this map. So my map is saved. Go to my missions and create a mission. And we'll just call it Mirror Webinar Demo. And it may be good to put the date as well so that you know when your mission was created and if you have any new versions that come up or something happens that you didn't like. So now I'm just going to do a couple move commands. I'm going to want to go to my position. So I want to find my map that I just created, and it's at the very top. Hey, Jared, we just had a question come in. Where did you find the move command at? So at the very top left, there's a move category, and then I just came down here to the move command. So there's a bunch of different types of moves, and kind of think of them like different folders. So there's a bunch of different options within this folder that I have. OK. So I'm going to move to position one. And then what I'll do is just copy it and then change this one to position two. Validate and close. And then I'll copy it again and move to position three. And I'll validate and close it. After that, I will save the mission. So we just have a simple point to point mission. And I saved it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and queue up the mission. You gotta find it first. There it is. So I'll queue it up. Notice how when I queued it up though, the robot didn't execute the mission or start executing the mission. This is because the robot is currently paused. And I have to play the robot to actually execute the mission. So I'm going to go into my dashboards. And this is a good way to kind of view the robot. You can create your own dashboards. You can limit access so that you can have single dashboard users for operators. So I can see my map right here. And I'll turn my webcam on as well. So let me move. over so you can see the robot. And there it is. So you, you can tell it's paused by its yellow lights on it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit the play button. And you can see it's 
lights change to blue, which means it's executing a mission. One question that just came in, Jared, mm -hmm. do you have to manually hit the play button from this software or could that be called from an outside source automatically? So that can be called from an outside source. So the robot has rest capabilities. So those are different types of commands that you can use through uh, different interfaces. So what we've done and what I'll further get into is so you can see the robot is having a really difficult time navigating this area because of this directional zone. I've made it the entire width basically. So it's kind of on the very edge. Yeah. Now, what is the dashed line that we're seeing? So the dashed line is the current path of the robot. OK. All right. One of the things I have done is I've had I have logged into the cameras of the room. I'm going to take screen control from you for a, a second. All right. Just to be able to show that. And what we have here are two IP addressable cameras that are in our automation lab. So you can kind of see the full view of the room itself. So now you can get an idea of what the map that Jared was working with actually represents. The larger rectangular area that you had seen in the middle are our trainers in the middle of the room. The perimeter around the room was where he had driven the robot with his phone. And now you can see the robot moving from one position to the next. And Jared, it looks like you taught a point right on top of one of our other mirror robots. You're right. I probably should move that point. So. That was intentional to show that it would stop without hitting it, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So exactly. this is the, the layout of the room that we're working with. And the data that you saw, the black lines, are the objects that were stationary during the mapping process. Everything that is red is the live data coming in from the scanners. And as long as there's motion that occurs within three to five seconds, of the map as it's being created. So if I'm walking behind it, it won't pick my feet up constantly. If I'm moving, it will ignore those because they're still in motion. So it makes it very easy to get a map set up and running. Right. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and let you take back over. All right. Let me turn my screen back on. All right. So you can see it aired out because there is another robot on its current point. So what I'll do is I'll just send the robot this point right here. So you can manually tell the robot to go to a point if you need to outside of the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll demonstrate right now. It's, so if I were to step in front of the robot, the robot will stop and go into an emergency stop. It'll clear. So that would be if something jumped out in front of it. Um, not that anything jumps and plants, but if someone stepped out in front of the robot, it would stop. And you can see as I am in front of the mirror, it planned actively around me. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to let you clean up your mission just a little bit more. There's a couple other questions that have come in mm -hmm. um, and thought I would go ahead and get those answered. One question that came through, does anyone offered a powered roller top conveyor with an automatic height lifter? And this has been answered by a couple of the ACS folks in the public uh, space already, but I thought I'd go ahead and address that. We do represent a company by the name of ROIC. It is spelled R-O-E-Q, and they make a full line of option modules for these mirror robots. Shelves, carts, powered roller conveyors, belt conveyors, variety of attachments to go right on the top to be able to perform different tasks. If you're just delivering parts to a production line, you may just need a shelf. Or if you have a group of parts that need to be offloaded via a conveyor, we're able to have a module that can dock up and transfer that material from one conveyor onto the mirror and then off the mirror back onto another conveyor. Uh, another question that we had come through how does the robot interface with other makes of robot used within the same shop floor? And there's several ways to, to do that one. We can tie in the wireless IO module 
Jared mentioned that a moment ago, the Advantech WISE module that allows us to bring in a series of discrete digital inputs to the robot via the Wi-Fi. The other option we have is a software option that ACS offers. We're referring to it as our fulcrum product. It's to balance the world of IoT with the manufacturing floor. And we do have a op or a module for this to go with the mirror that we have a pre-programmed set of commands to deal with the Wi-Fi structure REST API to help get a system up and running more efficiently and quickly. So that's gonna be going out into test phase and release within the coming weeks. So stay tuned for it. But that piece of software using the, the direct commands into the robot itself offers another level of control. So if you have an existing PLC, robot conveyor control system that can communicate via any of the common protocols, we can use this to bridge the gap between the two, or we can do a straight discrete wiring handshake using one of our wireless modules. And I think that takes care of the questions now, Jared. All right. So real quickly with the next couple of minutes, I would like to show an example of what Kale was talking about. So we're gonna we have an Opto 22 unit in our room, and you guys can currently see my screen right now. We have a bunch of different buttons right here, so we can see the battery trend of the robot within a certain period of time. So you can see in this area, they would just cycle power. Uh, in this area, it may have died. But we can also, we can view the statuses of the robot, but we can also view the current missions and we can queue missions. So I can come over here and I can throw in a charge mission and see it's selected there. And I can queue the mission. This is, using those REST API commands. And REST commands don't only hold to Opto. You can use other sources as well, as long as they can talk REST and send API commands. Um, you can do that through Python. You can do that through C Sharp. As long as you can send those commands, you can talk to the robot in this way. Okay, was there anything you wanted to add on the Opto? Um, yeah, well, the, the Opto is just the raw controller itself. What we've done is the intelligence that we put in with it to go ahead and automate these functions for the trending analysis, the mission call sequences, the ability to tie in the remote IO modules as part of our Fulcrum product that we're in development right now of. And so the, the raw opto module, if you are a programmer, is an excellent module to be able to work with. If you are looking for something as more of a finished system, that's where our fulcrum system come into play. Can you go ahead and click on the camera tab right quick? Yes. So this was the same tab I was using from my computer a moment ago. We have six IP addressable cameras around the room to be able to show what's going on. And you can see in camera one, that the Mir 200 is now back onto the charging sequence. So one of the beauties that we have with this Fulcrum product that we're launching is the ability to run parallel processing and have multiple call signals. So for example, I'm actually logged into the room from my computer in another location. I can actually turn the lights off on Jared while he's in the room and put him in the dark if I want to. So we can tie in those IO modules to be able to do things like open a door, close the door, just turn on a conveyor, turn off a conveyor, provide that other functionality so that this becomes not just a, a product, but a system to get something done. Uh, another question has come in, and this is probably uh, the last one we've got time for this morning, unless we get a few others pretty quickly. Is there any simulation software available to program the mirror and implement the program in the simulation? Uh, if I remember right, Jared, there is a simulator program for this, isn't there? There is. It 
is using the Mir 100, and you can create your own map. You can create your own missions as well. Yeah. Is there any software difference between the Mir 500 all the way up to the Mir 1000? No, they're all the same. Okay, so once I know how to run the software on one, I know it for all of them. Exactly. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jared. I'm watching the chat room again to see if there's any last minute questions that come in. Uh, just want to thank Jared for his time this morning and putting this together to go through the overview. We are going to be uploading this to our on-demand webinar uh, system within the next couple of days. If there's someone else in your facility who would like to go through it, if there is additional information that you would like us to send to you, ask about or schedule a demo for either our virtual room, or if you're allowing visitors on site, we can work that out as well. Um, our address I just put in the public chat room. It is info at acs-ga.com. Uh, Jared, did you have any final comments for us this morning? Yeah, if you're more interested in the REST commands, I will be hosting another webinar on Tuesday, kind of diving in to the REST commands, the structure of those requests, and we'll be doing that through Python. Yeah. Now, Jared, if I if I remember correctly, the webinar that we have scheduled for Tuesday is not an overview general information. It is a a programmer specific. So it's going to go into hardcore coding during that webinar. Correct. Right. I'll be showing you guys how to create a rest command to delete a mission to delete a queue. Sorry, to get the current battery of the robot and also queue a mission. All right. Last question we had came in. Uh, the name of the simulation software, the Mir Simulator, can be downloaded from uh, Mobile Industrial Robots website. And the simulation, the link for the simulation package is there. It does require a Linux machine, so you will either have to have a Linux machine or you'll need to install a Linux virtual machine onto your computer using a third-party software to make that run. But the Simulation software is off of Mobile Industrial Robots website, and the link is there for download. Um, all right, I think that's that's it for the big questions right now. Um, if I just got a comment from Chris about our lab. Thank you for the that. Uh, we've put a lot of effort into it. If any of you would like a more detailed tour of the lab, please email me at info at ACS. Uh, we'll be happy to take you on a more personal tour. If there's more questions that come up, you can send them there as well. And we will enjoy getting a chance to follow up and work with all of you. I hope you all have a great day. Jared, thank you again for your time this morning. Yes, and thank you, Gail. All right. Take care, everybody.